we create the divisions. How is that, Oprah, when we all say we believe in one God? Mm. All of them, every religion says there's one God. Now, if that is true, yes. why would we expect the message to be different everywhere? Why wouldn't we understand that this one God would have one message for one humanity? Why wouldn't we realize that that God has, has a different faces and different tongues, but that the message that comes through is going to be compassion. Right. It's going to be honesty. It's going to be love. It's going to be love. That is the language. Yeah. I recently went to an appointment with my wife to meet her new doctor. This man was absolutely the most knowledgeable doctor I've met in a long time. In the course of him explaining things, he would often mention God. He would say things like, how perfectly God made our bodies, and look how God designed us to fight off certain afflictions. He would thank God often and casually would bring him up. But he also used many new age terms like talking about chakras, letting the universe guide him, meditating, and being one with all things. Stuff like that. And it became clear to me that though he was talking about God, he was not talking about the one that I serve. He was not talking about our true creator, the most high, the great I am. But he was very sincere. And though I'm sure that he meant well, I knew we were on opposite sides of the battle lines. I mean, he knew we were believers, but in his view, it was all the same. And that's why he felt so confident in speaking about God with us. And I thought in my head just how far the world has gone from our creator and just how close we all are from the coming worship of the beast. Today, there is a majority feeling that everyone worships the same God. Though we have different names for him and worship him differently, people believe we are all worshiping the same God. And from this, it has been proven to be true that if you say the same lie out loud enough, people will begin to believe it. The world is ready to accept a world religion. People say that it's our religious beliefs that divide the world, and if we got rid of it, there would be more harmony and peace in the world. Like Jay-Z said, life begins when the church ends. Hail Mary to the city, you're a virgin, and Jesus can't save you, life starts when the church ends. And it should not be a surprise that this is what a vast majority believe, even many Christians. And so we are fast approaching a new world where all that live will worship one God and live in harmony. The only problem with that future is that the God that everyone will be worshiping will be Lucifer. And the harmony is a fake one built around massive control and legal slavery. What we know as the new world order. But that's what the world desires and is asking for. And maybe you or your family or your friends don't really know what to make of it. Do we all worship the same God just by different names? Or is this one world religion really a satanic plot for the world to worship Satan? Because we are so close to this agenda becoming a reality, the lines can seem very blurred. So I want to put things in perspective from the only opposing side of this one world religion. Let me break it down to you now. Let's begin. The Division In the ancient world, in the first human civilization, we see the empire of Samaria and Mesopotamia, which today would be southern Iraq. This civilization decided it was going to challenge God and build a tower that reached to the heavens. They all spoke the same language and they all followed their leader to challenge Yahweh. They were all in unison and worked together to come against our creator. Yahweh saw what they were doing and confused their languages. So they were no longer able to communicate, and this stopped their rebellion. Then they were scattered over the face of the earth, and this plot of the world coming together, rebelling against our creator, was not seen in our history again. The place they came together at was called Babel, because Yahweh confused the language of all the earth. And the tower that was built to reach to the heavens that was never finished is what we know as the Tower of Babel. Now you may or may not know this story. If you are not new to this channel, you definitely should know more about this because I break this down more extensively in part one of my History of Religious series. Now I'm sure you heard the phrase, history repeats itself, right? Well, the reason I went over this history is because that is precisely what we are seeing today. Our modern day world 
is repeating the first goal of the first known world civilization. Follow me. The world is building a civilization to collectively rebel against and challenge the true creator of this world, the Most High, Yahweh. Let me explain more from understanding history. You see, the ancient world were pagans. They had a polytheistic belief system that made them believe in multiple gods. All the beliefs that centered from the ancient world were all a part of a mystery religion. The ordinary people of the cultures worshipped the way they were told to, but all the real knowledge of who is being worshipped was held by the elites, the high priest. This is how they controlled the beliefs. They never gave the deep info to the masses. They just created the belief system and told them how to worship. And throughout all of history, these pagan beliefs and religions, though their gods had different names, they all were the same god. The key to understand is that the god that they all worshipped is Lucifer, the fallen angel, the light bearer. Now what's important to understand is the separation. Because one could say that through all the pagan beliefs, there was already a world religion. But that is not true. You see, though the civilizations believed in these pagan structures, there was not unity of beliefs, and there was still complete division because the world was not together. Empire would topple empire and there was no unity under their beliefs. And there was another major issue. Yahweh made a covenant with a small nation of people that would be his special chosen people. Though the world believed in many gods, this one nation would only know one God and be set apart from all other nations of the world. And there was nothing that Satan could do about it. And that's where we have the division that's in the world today. Now, I skipped over a lot of information and you may have questions about many details in the middle of all this. Please check out my other videos and hopefully the question has been answered in one of them, especially the History of Religion series. But like I was saying, the main division in the world today is because of the set-apart nation that Yahweh created in the ancient nation of Israel. And through them, he introduced himself to the known world. After Yahweh sent his son, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, to take the penalty of sin for the whole world and create a way for the world to come back and fellowship with him? Satan then tried to hijack our belief and mingle his mystery religion in with what they used to call the way and what we today call Christianity. Satan brought in confusion and masked his pagan religion into a form of Christianity and now tries to present himself as one God. And so long story made short, all the ancient pagan mystery religions, as well as the modern religions like Islam and different branches of Christianity like Catholicism and Mormonism, are all different religions that are centered around the same God. And so when people are believing that they are all worshiping the same God, there is strong truth to that belief. But there is a huge point that is missing from the connection. While all of these religions of the world are in fact worshiping the same one God, there is only one belief that is different from them all. And that is the true belief that stems from the set-apart nation of ancient Israel that led to salvation only through Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. The world gave this belief a label of Christianity. And so what we have is all the religions of the world and then Christianity on the other side. And this is the division. Now, there are divisions within certain religions like within Islam, there's the Sunnis versus the Shiites. But overall, the conflict of the religions of the world are divided from true Christianity and every other faith in this world. There is only one faith that tells us not to unite with the other faiths. There are so many details that goes along with all of this. Please forgive me if I have left out important information. Those that follow and believe in the God of the Bible are the only ones in the world that can say that the God that they believe in is not Lucifer. And maybe you ask, well, how can you be so sure? Let me answer this very simply. If you take the beliefs that the other religions believe in, there are always many similar characteristics into the character of their God. For instance, with their God, there is no penalty for not following him. He lets you pretty much do what you want without consequence. Sin is not clearly defined. There is no final judgment. 
and their hope is in a Messiah-like figure to come who is very different from the Messiah of the Bible. I made a video about the Jesus of the world versus the Jesus of the Bible. Please watch that video and that will explain this difference even more so. But like I was saying, I am so sure that there is a difference between the God of the other religions and the God of the Bible because Yahweh and his word, his doctrine, his laws, his prophecy, his love, his ways does not match at all with any of the other world religions, while the other world religions all can match up and align. And he tells us that there is only one way to our creator, and that's through belief in Yahshua HaMashiach, who the world later transliterated to Jesus Christ. The only way to our father is through belief in his son, and it's not some generic belief only by name, because a Muslim will tell you that they believe in Jesus too. There are not many paths to our father. There is one narrow gate that we all must walk through, and that is aligning completely with his word without addition or subtractions. And so that is the explanation of the division. The confusion. Now the confusion comes in today because many people do not identify with the Jesus of the Bible. A third of the world identifies as a Christian, but a majority of them do not align solely with the understanding of Jesus that comes from the word of Elohim, the Bible. Of course people will mention the Bible and even call out a few scriptures here and there. I, I am a Christian, that is my faith. My favorite Bible verse, because I am Christian, uh, is Acts something. <laughs> but it says, thank you, 1728. <laughs> in God I live and move and have my being. But the belief in Jesus today is a mix of the Bible along with tradition and religion. Today, Christianity is better referred to as churchianity because the belief is more about the culture of church than it is about being aligned with the Bible and being led by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. And so because people identify more with Jesus by name than by his word, where there used to be a division and separation, we are finding commonality and a desire for a union. And so with this undertone being set, the religious structures of the world are able to speak in terms of what they call love. And they present this goal of unifying religions to spread love. But what they do not share is that while they are promoting love of all religions, they are also promoting hate of our one true creator, Yahweh. So the three major religions of the world all desire to come together and claim that they all believe in the same God. And while they are doing this, the true faith in the God of the Bible is being censored and put down. Holding the traditional values that are aligned in the Bible can get you labeled as spewing hate speech. People can get sued and jailed for upholding biblical values. Major organizations that once labeled themselves as Christians are conforming and giving into the changes of this world. There is confusion because people are not holding on to the word any longer. They are holding on to religion. And as this way of belief became more mainstream, the powers that be are able to direct the world into unifying all beliefs. And the irony is that if a Christian truly was a believer, they would never fall for this deception. Because like I said, the Bible says that you can only go to the Father through Yahshua. And this one world religion is all foretold about in the Bible, which is what a believer should be aligning to the most. The Bible tells us there will be a one world religion, and it tells us what it will look like. What the Bible says about a one world religion. You see, the trouble that we all fall into is because of placing labels on subjects like this. Over time, it sounds more like a conspiracy than biblical prophecy. Because you won't see the words one world religion in the Bible. But though it is not labeled as such, it's still very much biblical prophecy. It's actually found in the book of Revelation chapter 13. Now I have a video series dedicated to the book of Revelation which I'm still working on completing. But the last video done in that series, part 5, is specifically about Revelation chapter 13. Please check it out. But let's look at what it says about this coming one world religion. Now the beast, 
which I saw like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and live. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay, now there's a lot to be broken down in this chapter. And again, this is not the video to do that. But what I am emphasizing to you is what the one world religion is. What this chapter is prophesying of is the world worshipping the beast. Verse 4 said, all the world marveled and followed the beast. It also said that they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, it clearly tells us who the dragon is. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The dragon who the world worships and who gives authority to the beast is Satan, the devil. Revelation chapter 13 tells us the whole world will worship the beast who was given authority from Satan, and those who do not worship the beast will be killed. And this is what a one world religion will be. The one world religion is where the whole world worships Satan. This prophecy did not say some of the world or a certain percentage. It said all of the world will marvel and follow the beast. Verse 8 says all who dwell on the earth will worship him. The only ones who will not are those whose names have been written in the book of life. And this is where the world is heading towards. This is the one world religion. And the Bible tells us specifically of it. So again, if you are asking, how do I know that it's not all the same thing? It's because the Bible clearly is warning us against it and telling us not to accept it. Why would the Bible warn you against something that it wants you to accept? Anyways, this is what a one world religion will be according to the Bible. And after you have understood the history of all the ancient pagan mystery religions and who they truly serve, it becomes convincingly clear that this is happening right now. What is happening now? So I have explained the division. I have gone over the confusion and even what the Bible has to say about it all. But maybe because you aren't aware of what's happening right now, you still may not be able to clearly see what time it truly is. Let me play some clips for you of what is happening right now. La mayor parte de los habitantes del planeta se declaran creyentes. Esto debería provocar un diálogo entre las religiones. No debemos dejar de orar por él y colaborar con quienes piensan distinto. Confío en Buda. Creo en Dios. Creo en Jesucristo. Creo en Dios. Allah. Muchos piensan distinto, sienten distinto, buscan a Dios o encuentran a Dios de diversa manera. En esta multitud, en este abanico de religiones, hay una sola certeza que tenemos para todos. 
todos somos hijos de Dios. sat down and talked about the preparations for the big event, Joel revealed to me an incredible opportunity he just had to meet with Pope Francis. I just felt very honored and very humbled. Mm -hmm. Seeing the Pope give the Mass to 100,000 people that day, you just see you know, he has such a heart to help people. I love the fact that he's made the church more inclusive, not trying to make it smaller, but to try to make it larger, to take everybody in. So that just resonates with me. The Vatican says Pope Francis is pleased with the progress made in Christian-Muslim dialogue six months after his trip to the United Arab Emirates. In February, the Holy Father made history by becoming the first pope to visit the Arabian Peninsula. In Abu Dhabi, he signed a joint Catholic-Muslim declaration with the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar. He is considered to be, by some Muslims, to be the highest authority in Sunni Islamic thought. Pope Francis welcomed an interreligious group from Argentina made up of 15 Jews, 15 Muslims, and 15 Christians. They were on their way back from a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. The Pope greeted each person, some of whom he already knew from his time as Archbishop of Buenos Aires. <laughs> Y es un mensaje, ¿no? un mensaje de que tenemos el mismo Padre en el cielo. El mismo Padre acá también, ¿no? ¿Sí? <risa> We're here on the Mount of Olives with lots of tourists. Mm -hmm. And we're overlooking the Temple Mount mm -hmm. with the Golden Dome of the Rock and the al aqsa Mosque. It was believed by most also the place for the Third Temple where it will be built. It's such a holy site to so many people. Why is it so controversial? I think that's the that's the exact purpose because it's so holy, and um, all the monotheistic religions, Christian, Jews, and Muslims, all feel like this is their place of worship, and so it's very controversial of who's going to actually end up on this mount. Do you think the three religions could share the the Temple Mount? Um, personally, I don't, but there is a huge movement about coexisting on the Temple Mount. And, and even recently, within the last two weeks, I know of a, a meeting between Christians and Muslims and Jews who all are talking about um, what are the possibilities and, and how could they establish both a temple and a mosque um, on the Temple Mount. What kind of plans are being made to, to build a third temple? There are actually quite a few, and um, depending on the group that you talk to, um, different architectural designs have been made. So one group is doing a design more like Herod's Temple, and it would be on the Temple Mount, and I don't believe that they would have uh, a mosque that, that would be there. Um, there are other groups that are more um, focused on the design that's given in Ezekiel, chapters 40 through 48, which is the next stru structure in Scripture that God said to build a temple in this way. And then even some archaeological research has been done recently that would say that the, the Holy of Holies is not under the Dome of the Rock, which is the most common assumption, but a little bit to the north, and that's why the kind of the coexist movement is moving forward is because it's possible that they could be right next to each other on the Temple Mount. So what preparations are actually being made um, right now to build the, the third temple? There are actually quite a few and it just um, shows that God is giving the Jewish people kind of signs or an expectation that it's time for the soon coming Messiah. But um, there is a group specifically that has uh, reestablished the Levitical priesthood. They just started a school uh, a few months ago and they have a registry for those who are from the Levitical line um, that they could come and be trained and be ready to do the service in the temple. Um, they've also started a red heifer farm. Um, the Temple Institute did with an Israeli farmer and that was again with ritual purity that they need to have a, a uh, red heifer that meets uh, Jewish law and has been supervised and doesn't have any white hairs. It's completely red heifer to be able to be burned, mixed with white er, running water, and then um, used to make everybody ritually pure to be able to go into the temple. I mean, right now, I've, Jewish people just going on the Temple Mount can create a riot sometimes. So can you envision a scenario where where they would allow the temple to be built? Um, a lot of the um, scholars that I've spoken to uh, talk about how the building of this next temple is really going to bring peace to Israel and to bring safety from all her, her enemies. And so in that way, I can see that um, any maybe leader that would be raised up or somebody that would be able to bring the nations together, especially those who might align with Israel, that there might be some agreement that, that, that the temple could exist there and this person could be set up in the temple. What we know. You see, as you can tell, the world is getting prepared to come together in unity. The table is being set. But unfortunately, this will only happen after major calamity and chaos. 
This is how they do it. They bring their order out of chaos. You might hear a lot about a new world order, and maybe you're stuck on the financial side where they're going to have an economic collapse to bring us into some form of global socialism. Or maybe you understand what they're trying to do with technology and have us all under constant control and surveillance, a complete police state. Or maybe you're thinking about the mark of the beast and how they're desiring to have us all microchipped. And all of these things are real and they are coming, but they are just details. The one world religion is the major goal and it always has been. Like we started with, this goal has been ever since the first world civilization and the Tower of Babel. Now the world is again coming together to unify in their rebellion against Yahweh. This is because this is all about Satan and his goal of being like the Most High. I talk about this a lot in my other videos. The One World Religion is the big piece to the overall puzzle, and it's all what we are being conditioned to accept. On May 14th, next year in the year 2020, the Pope is hosting what he's calling a Global Education Pact, where he has invited world leaders and representatives of the major world religions together to unite the world by bringing it all together. The Pope has been a major player in promoting the unity of all faiths. He says it many times that we're all worshiping the same God. And this is what is happening right before our eyes. The Conclusion There are only two sides of this topic. There are those that will come together in unity and worship, claiming the same God. And then there are those who stand steadfast and proclaiming the one true God of Israel and coming to him only through the belief in his son, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Understand, there will be no in-between. Either you are for Yahweh or you are against him. This is such a huge topic, and I know there is a lot more that could be addressed on this topic. But my main goal of this video was to present to you what the one world religion is and answer the question, are we all worshiping the same God? If you have already made a decision to worship our true creator and believe in his son whom he sent, then please make this your priority and focus on your relationship with him right now today. Don't ever lose that focus. If you still are not sure where you stand, please get sure. Study the Bible without modern day religion and learn about our creator and our savior. Seek him, draw close to him and he will draw closer to you. But in the end, you have two options. And though it may seem that not making a decision is an option too, you should understand it still is a decision for the other side. With Yahweh, either you're all in or you're not. He doesn't want half or a part of you. He wants you completely. You see, Satan will take pieces of you because his only goal is to keep you away from Yahweh. Indecision is still a decision. It's time you get serious. You see what time it is. This is not some conspiracy theory. This is real life. This is the Bible being played out right in front of our eyes. And it's time to decisively take a side. So the question is, whose side are you on? Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it with others. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. With all the changes happening in the world, if you do not see this channel on this platform any longer, Elohim willing, these messages will still be given directly on my website, uploaded every Friday. Please sign up directly on my website to receive email notifications. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel on Facebook and Instagram as well. As always, I'd like to thank all who donate and contribute to this ministry. Your donations are truly a blessing to this ministry and help very much. Thank you for your love and support and letting our Father use you. You are truly a blessing and I really appreciate the support. Be blessed. Okay, everyone. Thanks again for watching. I love you all.